everybody. I'm Kevin Lay from the Uncle Jonesy's Cameras podcast, and you are watching Uncle Jonesy's Camera of the Week. We're starting a new video series, Kelly and I, and we're taking a camera from our collection and taking a few minutes to talk about it and show what we like about it and what we don't. So today's camera is the Minolta XD7, and I have one of those right here. Now the XD7 is actually the same camera as the XD11, that's the US version, and the XD, that's the Japanese version, and the XD7 is the European version. And I don't know how I managed to get a hold of a European version, but I did in an antique store in North Georgia. And I'm glad I did because this happens to be one of the best cameras, if not the best manual focus single lens reflex camera that Minolta ever made. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. First of all, a few facts. Number one, this camera was made by Minolta from 1977 until 1984. Number two, at the time, Minolta and Leica were working together in cameras, in camera production and design. And this camera, the X-D7 and the X-D11 and the X-D, came out as a Leica camera as well. And that was the R4. They're not exactly alike but they share a lot of the same inner workings, the chassis and the shutter and things like that. And that means it's a pretty good camera. Now, what do we like about the X-D7 or the X-D11, X-D so much? Well, first of all, when you pick this camera up in your hands, it has a great feel in your hands. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it is a smaller camera than the other Minolta cameras at the time. It's not as long or thick or wide, and it's not that heavy. It just has a great feel in your hand. But it is an all-metal camera. At the time, cameras were starting to come out with a lot of plastic on them. But this is all metal, and it's solid as can be. It just feels like a very finely crafted piece of work. That's probably why it feels so good in my hand as well. Well, another reason, too, is that the early versions of this camera had this really soft leatherette on it, which in many examples uh, began to shrink. But mine is still in great shape, and so just an outstanding feel when you pick it up. Now, what about the features that make this camera special? Well, this was the first camera that I know of that came out in three exposure modes. Now, back in those days, Minolta and Nikon cameras were what we call aperture priority, which means that when you turn them on in automatic mode uh, and you set an aperture, the camera chose the shutter speed. And, and that's the way you kind of use the meter back in those days, was you'd set an aperture and the camera would choose a shutter speed. Canon cameras were different. Canon cameras were shutter speed or shutter priority. So you chose the shutter speed and the camera would choose the aperture in automatic mode. Well, Minolta said, we're going to make a camera that does both. And so here on the top, on the shutter speed dial, you have an A, an S, and an M. And the A means aperture priority, the S is shutter priority, and the M is manual. So you can decide which priority you want to use uh, in automatic mode, aperture or shutter. And if you want manual, but you want to see the suggestion, you want the meter to actually work, it does that as well. It is fully metered manual. Now this camera, when you look through the viewfinder, you got all the important information. You got the shutter speed that the camera suggests and the aperture or what you choose and uh, you also see what you've chosen as well. So all the information is in the viewfinder. Um, let's see what other things make this camera special. When you are in uh, aperture priority and you choose an aperture, it will choose a shutter speed that we consider stepless, which means it doesn't just go by 1,500, 250, 125, if it thinks that the shutter speed should be in between those settings, it will choose that. It chooses the exact shutter speed that the meter feels is right for the exposure. So that's pretty cool. All right, what else? Well, let's say that your batteries fail. 
So if you turn the shutter speed dial to the O setting on top, it will put the camera in a shutter a mechanical shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second, and you don't need batteries for that. So you can continue to shoot even if you are without batteries. Now let's see here. It has a, a, a feature called final check metering, which means that when the uh, when you press the shutter button and the mirror opens up and you to and, and the um, aperture closes down to the setting that you've chosen it will make one final meter check to make sure that its exposure is right spot on okay when you look through the viewfinder it's probably one of the brightest viewfinder screens that Minolta ever made it's really nice and bright it looks really good looking through it all right so you can also interchange the um, the viewing screens in this camera which is very unusual for a Minolta camera. And the shutter itself is a vertical metal shutter blade that was developed in conjunction with Leica. So it's very quality. And it is, when I fire the shutter in this camera, it is as smooth as can be. Flash sync on this camera is faster than many, uh, than any prior uh, Minolta camera. And even the X700, which is another really good camera, but considered to be a system camera. But on this camera, the flash shutter sync speed is one hundredth of a second, which is really fast. All right, so it's got another feature here on the back. If you are putting the camera on a tripod and you're using a remote shutter, or if you're using the self timer and you want the camera to not be fooled by the light coming into the viewfinder, you can flip this up right here or flip it down actually, and it closes off the viewfinder, a viewfinder blind, which means the shutter won't be influenced by light coming in from the rear of the camera. It also has a self timer, right? And it has a depth of field preview button. This camera has pretty much everything you would expect a professional camera to have. One uh, final thing is that you can select a plus or minus one or two stop exposure compensation right here. So if you want to say, I, I want to push my film one stop, you don't even have to change the, the shutters, the, the, the film speed. You could just put everything in one or two, minus one or two stops on that, and you're set to go. Has a little memo holder in the back for film. If you can uh, put something back there to remind you what film you have in it. And of course, it takes the entire range of Minolta manual focus lenses, which are underrated in my opinion. I think they're really good lenses and they're not that expensive out there. So um, there's not a whole lot to say to dislike about this camera. Uh, it, it could easily be, if you are wanting to go into Minolta system lenses and all, this could be your main SLR. And, and I would certainly call it that for me as well. Has a place to plug in your flash sync to if you want to use a remote flash. So, Minolta XD7, XD11, or XD, if you come across one of these cameras, I'd highly recommend that you pick it up. You'll want to test it out, make sure it's in good shape, and uh, it would be a camera, in my view, that would be worth paying the money for uh, a CLA to get it fully working, a clean lubricate and adjust um, because uh, it's just a solid camera in every way. All right, so there's your Uncle Jonesy's camera of the week, the Minolta XD7. I'll be back next week with another camera. Until then, we'll see you next time and happy shooting.